building some speed, hammering down the line. She takes to the air and she'll ride out. Happy finals day as we come into play right with a big moment for Silvana Lima to get things started against Lakey Peterson. The semifinals are on quickly here for the Swatch Pro as we just got the semifinals stacked up for the Hurley Pro catching up to the tail end of Lakey's ride coming off of the break. So already with some catch up to do to work out the final here on Friday in San Clemente, California. Waves are looking rippable even though it's smaller than it's been the last couple of days. It's absolutely rippable, especially on the lowers left. Potts, Lakey got a big start here. Yeah, she did. Uh, already a 3.5 under her belt. This is wave number two, and uh, she is lighting it up. Obviously, she's been keeping an eye on what's happened earlier this morning in the Hurley Pro. There's been a lot of scoring left. Felipe Toledo choosing to uh, go on a couple of left-handers, but look at these rights and lowers. The conditions are absolutely flawless here this morning. And Silvana Lima carrying some sort of confidence, Joe. We had a chat to her yesterday afternoon, and she is loving that new sharp eye under her feet. And uh, she is looking dangerous here on finals day. Silvana Lima finding some form, and this was the first wave of the heat, Joe, 3.50 on this occasion. Lakey just getting caught behind that first section, opening up with a nice turn. Just trying to get the ball rolling here. First heat of the morning for the women. And Lakey goes down on that opening exchange. So, a couple of quick waves there. You definitely feel that buzz in the air pots that it's finals day. You don't have to save anything for the rest of the week. It's all about bringing out your best. Right now, first thing in the morning, Lakey Peterson from Santa Barbara, but now lives in San Clemente. So she's real close to this lineup. Smart move, especially through the summer months when Santa Barbara goes completely flat. If you live up there this time of year, you gotta drive a lot just to get yourself some good waves. So she decided just to make that move full time as she takes on one of the legends of the sport, the only surfer representing Brazil in the top 17, Silvana Lima. Her best result in the making since 2011 here, Potts. Yes, well, she's uh, absolutely on fire. She's had some crazy good heats as well. And uh, not an easy run to the uh, semifinals, that's for sure. But uh, like I said, she's found some new form and uh, she's looking good. Amazing to see how things have been working out on it. finals day so quickly here. Felipe Toledo taking out Kanoe Garashi. John John Florence will be in that matchup in semi two. We already had the Smith and Ace Bucket heat lined up from yesterday afternoon as we're going to be flying through finals day quickly here on Friday. As we want to say a big good morning, thanks for joining us. Joe Chappell in the booth with one of my all-time favorite surfers, Martin Potter, oh, former thanks, world Joe. champ. Well, yeah, still pushing the <laughs> limits today. I asked you about your predictions yesterday. I love putting you on the spot. Looks like everything's going smooth on, on the men's side. What about the women? Thinking about Silvana's role. She hasn't won an event in a very long time. That would be extra special for the Brazilian on tour. No, absolutely. That would be an absolutely amazing result. And, uh, you know, obviously, you know, she's had a tough run through it. She's had Steph Gilmore a couple of times and she's taken Steph down. So to, to have that newfound confidence just throws another surfer in the mix, a, a dark horse, uh, someone that can really, you know, upset that top five uh, sort of conversation. So I'm liking what I'm seeing from Silvana. She started off well in this heat as well. Uh, her first wave, a keeper, an excellent score to kick, kick things off. But Lakey answers back with an excellent score of her own. Silvana Lima, 8.5. Last score for Lakey, 8.0. Another great battle underway already with 23 on the clock. As we remember, Silvana was one of the rivals of Steph Gilmore, going back to 2007, 2008, making multiple finals. You always thought that Lima had a world title in her future. If you think about her previous semifinal in the championship tour level back in Rio de Janeiro in 2011. Well, 2012 kicked off and you thought, okay, everything's normal. Quarterfinal at Snapper for Silvana, still looking sharp. Then she had that crazy knee injury. Sidelined her for the rest of the year. Came back with the wild card for the tour the following season, but just was still dealing with some, some pain. Fell off tour, which we didn't see coming and then had to go to the QS, got herself back on the top 17. Remember, she got the 10 at Snapper, 10 at Bells, fell off the tour again, back to the QS, and now she finds herself 
back a part of the top 17, winning the QS again this season, one of the hardest working athletes in the game. Can we just say one of the heaviest roller coaster rides <laughs> in the history of professional surfing? I mean, that is, uh, that's crazy what Savannah's had to overcome and what she's had to deal with, but I, I'm loving where she's at now. She's just uh, absolutely, you know, in good form. She's got a new board under her feet, like we're talking about. And uh, I mean, like we, we spoke to her yesterday, and she's just beaming with confidence. So great to see that. What a great matchup. Lima, remember, got past Gilmore, her longtime rival, to get this far. Lakey had to get past Carissa Moore to get a part of this semifinal. As we compare the excellent scores with 88 world champ Barton Lynch. Barton, what was the big difference from Peterson's eight? to the 8-5 for Lima. Well, it was all about the outside work. We know that the work you do on the outside of the wave, in theory, is more important than what happens on the inside of the wave. It's a bigger face, a bigger canvas, it's more critical. There's more risk because if you fall on the inside, you've at least had that outside. If you fall on the outside, you've blown the whole thing. So I think in that exchange, the 8-5 for Silvana was based on the outside work, which was much better than Lakey's outside work. Lakey pegged it up and got really close because of that inside work, but fell just short because the outside wasn't quite as punctuated as punctuated as Silvanus. So the judge is clear, clearly showing that that outside work is where the big scores are. The inside work can help you get there and, and help build it up. But without the outside work, you're always going to be handicapped that little bit. Like seeing that, Barton, great breakdown. 8-5 to the 8 on the difference. Different ways to get the scores. As we know, BL, both these surfers have been loving to push the progressive element this week. How are the conditions favoring that this morning? Well, it's not as it's not as favourable as, as it has been. There is that texture and that calmness on the water, very glassy, kind of hard to get definition that Strider was talking about. I can see that from here too. That was a very good point. And then you've got the inconsistency where you've got to you've got to bank them when they come. We saw Felipe Toledo on a couple of the biggest waves of the day and fall can be critical mistakes in these in these conditions. If you're behind and you get a good one, you've got to milk that score out of that wave. Taking the risk will bump it up, but if you fall you're going to take yourself out of the event. BL, it's finals day. How's the energy downstairs? Oh, the energy's good, mate. It's great. It's really amping up. As Pete alluded to this morning, it was a little, you know, it's overcast. It's a little grayer, the gray on the water. It was a little calmer this morning before the storm, maybe, because here we go. Lakey picking up another inside to the left-hander, boys. Peterson, first turn, a little carve to get this one going. Keeps that same motion on her second effort. Now a third snap down the line. She'll just end up getting a climbing maneuver through the inside corner, trying to better a 3.5 to strengthen her lead over Silvana Lima. BL, we've seen a lot of the lefts being a big factor early in the morning. You think that's going to stay the same throughout the day? Yes, it just seems like you know there's more lefts than there are rights. The best waves in the lineup, the very best ones, are the big set rights, without question. But there's very few of them. There might be one or two of them at heat. Uh, so you've got to be in the right place at the right time to get them. The opportunities are on the lefts without priority, and there's more of them. So not surprising to see these first few heats, people going left. And then on those men's semis, just a little point I thought. If you look at John John and Philippe Toledo, ordinarily in these conditions, I think you would go with Philippe in terms of his speed and lightning reflexes and, and his, the boards he rides. But out of this morning's, I actually think John John looked a little sparkier and a little more alive than what Philippe did. So maybe advantage John John out of the semis and here's Silvana an absolute bomb, boys. Look at this one. There we go. Thank you, BL. Big flow for Silvana. Thought she was going out the back. She recovers. Oh. But then ends up throwing away the car through the inside corner. So Lima had the 8-5 for a while, sat on that best wave of the heat. It's going to be a real small backup at the moment. Meanwhile, Potts, Lakey went to her back end 5.0 to move herself into first place. Yeah, good move there on Lakey's behalf. Uh, you know what, it is it is very slow and you've got to kind of capitalize. Let's have a look and see what happened with Savannah. Just see how that board kind of almost tipped, out, tipped over onto its rail which kind of threw her behind and, and she wiped off way too much speed. You can see getting caught behind that section and then really no speed in to, to, to really go for that next turn. So unfortunate there for Savannah Lima, but she's got an 8.5. There's 18 and a half minutes to go. Plenty of time to come back from that. Um, you look at Lakey's two waves, an eight and a five. So a good move there from Lakey just to improve her situation and just keep that pressure on Silvana. Silvana Lima's won a few championship tour contests. Her first, we'll never forget, at Bells Beach. She was in a final over Gilmore. 
She ended up winning a final over Stephanie that same season. We're going back to 2008, 2009 era when they had so many matchups together. Nice glassy inside right for Silvana, oh. but she ends up getting stuck once again. Lima's last to 1.93. Still just needs a 4.5 to get the lead. Two consecutive falls. If it's a different surface, sometimes you get nervous, but still kind of does this sometimes. She'll just kind of keep herself looking, fall in a couple of scores, and sometimes there's a 10 around the corner. But the one thing we do notice is the missed opportunity when she goes down. Yeah, exactly right. Um, it's kind of how she operates, Joe. I mean, she it's either twos or tens with Silvana. <laughs> and, uh, you know, I think that it, it, she's got to clean that up. I think if uh, she wants to get herself in a, you know, into that top 10, into that world title scenario, I think she needs to, to be a little bit more consistent, uh, less peaks and valleys and, and a bit more consistency. But, you know, she's got that ability to drop those massive scores, uh, unlike a lot of other surfers. So if she can clean up those little mistakes, I think she'll be super dangerous. I can't believe some of the matchups we have to look forward to today. Pods, semi-final, Felipe Toledo versus John John Florence. We deserve that, don't we? We do. We absolutely do. And uh, the first one, obviously, with Ace Bucking up against Geordie Smith. Ace uh, surfing out of his skin the last few days, just dropping massive scores. So, um, you know, you'd almost say it's a no-brainer that Geordie's going to move through that, but not to be. I mean, Ace steps up for those big heats. So Geordie's got to be on his game. He's got to be on the good waves. Ace is a tactician, yet he is surfing incredibly well. Felipe Toledo now downstairs with Rosie Hodge. Well, Felipe coming away with a win in that one. We know that yourself and Cano, you guys have a little bit of history the last two times he's got you, so it must feel pretty good to get that one over him. Uh, yeah, sure. Uh, you know, finally won without interference. <laughs> but um, yeah, thank God the waves came to my way and uh, uh, I got to surf pretty good on the on the backhand and uh, yeah, I don't know, just feeling comfortable, just uh, having a lot of fun. My whole family's down here, actually my wife, baby, so they're, they're coming. It was too early for them to come, but uh, uh, it's just, you know, stoked to be here, stoked to be on the final day again and uh, uh, just got to thank God for the amazing little waves that we have right now. It's super glassy, clean, you know, and uh, yeah, just got to enjoy and have fun on the next seat. And Felipe, you're a freak, but I feel like we haven't seen the extent of your freakishness just yet in the semifinals, maybe looking at a final. What do you have in store? Uh, yeah, you know, uh, looking forward to doing better this year. Um, and now semifinal against Sean, I know, yeah, I mean, not just me, but everyone on tour got to go big against Sean if you want to beat him. And, uh, you know, uh, I didn't really quite connect with the sets, with the, the best waves of the heat, you know. It's always in my heat, no, no the ocean goes flat. So just, you know, um, hoping God can send me some really good waves on the semifinals and, you know, we can have a really good heat. And, uh, yeah, I don't know, just just try some big airs. <laughs> good luck in that semi with John. Well done. Thank you so much, Rosie. Felipe Toledo looking comfortable, confident, happy to get a clean start to the heat with Kanoa Garashi. As we know, their last two matchups, it's started off with an interference that's really taken out Toledo with losing a whole wave. This one different. He's on to the matchup with John John as we see Lakey go up and out. And what a heat that is with some great history. Felipe's never beat John John in a one on one heat. We go back to that super heat they had in France. Remember Toledo did that oh, flyaway yeah. air. That sent John into that extra round, but we don't count that as a three man heat. But John got him back in the quarters of that event. And also got him one meeting before, so we have a crazy semi-final matchup to look forward to as we catch up with Silvana here. Pops. Yeah, Silvana just trying to back up that 8.5. I like the fact she's staying busy. Beautiful turn there from Silvana, and right there thrown that rail into the water. I love that, just that commitment that Silvana's showing at the moment. There's no holding back for her, and and quite rightly so. This is the semi-finals. There's no holding back. You've got to finish today with nothing left in the tank. She's got an 8.5 as a keeper. She's trying to back that up. So it's looking like that is going to happen. She's looking for a 4.50 to move into the lead. But I know up against Lakey, you're going to need two excellent waves to win this heat. Lakey knows that it takes a couple of nines these days to beat her in this kind of form of lower trestles. Well, there is the lead change. Savannah, 5-1-0 is out in front. Lakey now chasing a 5-6-1. We'll see if she can get it right after this.
This is the best we've seen Silvana Lima all season. With Silvana Lima ramping up for the tail high reverse. This is another <laughs> solid wide for Silvana. Here we go, Lakey Peterson's gonna get her shot. 12.30 on the clock, there's that big twist and wrap hook from Lakey Peterson, perfect flow, and she's got the lip to hit and she smashes it. <laughs> oh my gosh. Welcome back to the Swatch Pro. Welcome back to Finals Day for the Swatch Pro and Hurley Pro. We're checking out the road to the final. Silvana Lima got past Stephanie Gilmore in the first quarter final. That was after Gilmore comboed Tyler Wright in round four. Chris Samore turned in a super heat. I'm thinking maybe Lakey Chris a quarter two. One of my favorite heats of the whole season. Lakey on top, 19.5 plus total. Her best combined total this season. We had the crazy Jeep Yellow Jersey matchup. Courtney Conlog took out Sally Fitzgibbons. And Fitzgibbons just got a hold of that Jeep Yellow Jersey. Now it's up to Courtney to see if she'll take it into Europe. Erickson ended up being comboed by Keely Andrew. Second year on tour. Eight, Sage had all that momentum from her US Open win and let a wave go by that really made the biggest difference in that heat. Now we get to see Keeley take on Courtney coming up next. Yeah, well, that's uh, it's going to be a, a great heat for Keeley. I think these waves are really going to play into Keeley's hands as well. Uh, she's uh, She loves these perfect little right-handers coming from the, the Sunshine Coast in Australia. Very similar kind of conditions up that way. So she's going to be dangerous in these little right-handers. 10.30 to go, Lakey with priority. And is looking for a 5.61 for a lead change here. Still looking for a first major move on the right. There's that classic, beautiful carve. Nice snap off the lip. Hits it off the roof. Under a fourth maneuver. Quick down carve and jams it on the inside corner. So that one delayed that first turn, but she absolutely capitalized towards the tail end. And still hunting down a mid-ranger, 5.61. You think it'll lead change there, Potts? Yeah, I am, Joe. I think uh, for sure lead change. You know, a little bit of a slow start to that wave, but um, you know, I like the fact she took her time. You know, if you're not sure about something, just just wait a bit. You know, it's. Uh, I think once you get that sense of urgency, sometimes mistakes will creep in. I think Lakey just took her time with his first section. She could have hit it there, but just decided to go down and around it. And now she starts to open up, which gave her that speed going into that maneuver, made it a little bit more dynamic. So good surfing from. Lakey Peterson as she brings it through the inside and now she starts to crank it up. So starting to find her feet, obviously with that 8.0 on her back end. And we're gonna definitely see a lead change as scores start coming through. Lakey Peterson waits for that score, but Silvana Lima is not patient out the back with lowers is firing. First turn, nice and smooth. Second car, nice and clean, a big wrap there. A little layback, just to change it up a little bit. She'll get into this inside corner. A lot of Silvana Lima fans on the beach cheering her on through her last maneuver. We're proud of Toledo there. Excited to see that performance. Felipe there as well. Happy to see Silvana move to Sharp Eye Surfboards. She said she found some magic with equipment. As we know, Toledo made that move a couple of years ago, and it's done wonders for his world title campaign. Yeah, remember the, the first time we saw him ride that board on the Gold Coast, it was next level stuff. And that's what we've seen from Silvana Lima as well, just that extra confidence. You know when you lay that board over on the rail, you know exactly what it's going to do. It feels fresh, it feels alive under your feet, and you start surfing how you want to. Some beautiful maneuvers for Silvana Lima. I like the fact she pulled up on this wave, Joe. She didn't really go for too much, she knew she was on a bomb, she knew she was on her way to a good score. Let's have a look at the first turn, which is very important. Through the lip there, so some commitment from her. And then combos it up with a different turn, setting that rail, putting those fins, and just letting that spray fly out the back of the wave. She is sneaky powerful, Savannah Lima. Looking for a 7.10, Joe. I think we're going to see a seesaw battle. Seven minutes and 45 to go. You can see how she's laying that board over and then just drives off that extending that back leg. See how it straightens up and now compresses to the board. Perfect technique there from Silvana Lima. Her carves are looking so lethal and high scoring throughout the last few rounds. We know she's been throwing reverses, but her carves have been almost more impressive just with that down the line flow. She's always one of the fastest surfers on tour. But now packing in the maneuvers at the right place. 
Last score for Peterson, the 7-6. Got her out in front. She's in position for a lower's left here. Big wind up, nice vertical to start. Off the bottom again, there's a second jam into that carving maneuver. Clean transitions till that point, a little catch of the rail before the final couple turns, but she makes up for it. 6.55 to go, a final berth on the line. As we know, it's really been the world champs event on the women's side with Gilmore winning in the past, Carissa Moore and Tyler Wright. All three of those surfers out of the contest early. So we'll have a brand new champ this year as we check out Lakey's left again. Yeah, Lakey's left, well, she's uh, she dropped an 8.0, kind of got caught up a little bit, but then just corrected it. I mean, these next couple of turns, beautiful for Lakey. She's putting so much power into her maneuvers. Putting that board on the rail, she knows she's got a fight on her hands right now. Why? Because look at that last score from Silvana Lima. A seesaw battle, as we predicted, Joe. An 8.4 for Silvana. Back at first, another lead change. It seems like Lakey gets in the lineup and just demands the best out of her competitors. She's had so many crazy battles. They've been the highest scoring on road to this semifinal. And back out in front with six minutes to go. Lakey now chasing an 8.9. 88 world champ Barton Lynch on hand. Broke down the difference between the opening exchange. What about those last couple of scores from Lakey to Silvana Lima Biel? It's been in, it's interesting when you see a pattern evolving in a heat. And the pattern in this heat has been that Silvana's had the outside work and the insides haven't really finished that strong. They've kind of faded out, but the work's already been done and the scores have come. For, for Lakey, it's been the opposite. She's kind of missed the outside bits and then had to work the inside to kind of boot bolster that score and get it up into the range she needs. It's interesting to see on that last left, she must have realized that because you see the, the determination to paddle into a critical part of the wave, hit that first section nice and hard and strong and try and change that pattern that had been evolving. But uh, Silvana looking calm, looking controlled at this point, which is not really how we've seen her all year. So even here around the competitors area, watching Silvana this morning, smiling, happy, gregarious, talking with people, joking around and looking like she's carrying no pressure at all. And then it shows in the water. BL, it's amazing what a new fresh board will do, right? Oh, incredible what a fresh board will do in the pots. And then a fresh attitude from who she was earlier in the year and the pressure she seemed to be carrying on her shoulders and how unenjoyable the whole process of competing looked for Silvana. Turned it around completely. And here's Lakey looking to bounce back. That one wasn't going to be it. Lakey really needs to wait. I think, you know, although time is counting down and it's against her now, she's not going to be able to get the score she needs on a less than excellent wave. Like in that call, Barton Lynch and also maybe Silvana Lima may be feeling less pressure this early number one on the qualifying series at the moment already with a big win so she's backing herself up well all ready for next season as we check out the recap for the first semi-final for the swatch pro lakey peterson has been one of the highest scoring athletes on the lefts and the rights got herself in the excellent range with an 8.0 to put pressure on silvana yeah and silvana has answered back to that pressure joe with surfing like this She's opting for the right-handers, and so and you heard Barton talk about the best, the, the very best waves are the set right-handers, and Savannah's been nailing it on both her occasions. An 8.5 on her first good wave, she's booked ends with an 8.40 on her last good wave, mixing it up, showing some flair, showing some variety, showing that extra little bit of confidence, a new board under her feet, and it is going a long way. This heat is nowhere near over, three minutes and 20 seconds to go. Savannah's got to keep her eye on the prize. Lakey, she can come out of nowhere and drop bombs. Amazing, look at that opening exchange, still glassy conditions during that recap. Lakey got this right-hander, went for a big blow tail, nailed it, good for one move, and got out of there. They've seen a lot of versions of that throughout this week, and now they know that Lakey, not just Lakey, Silvana, Carissa, a lot of them have been throwing it down here at lower trestles. You know what, in the past we've seen maybe one per event, now we've, we've almost seen one every heat, right? So it's. The, the, the progression on the women's side of the, of the draw is just going through the roof, Joe. You can start counting on them. And Peterson said it's something that she wants to do almost every heat if she can, especially when she's at lowers. This time it's been about overall performance. Her low score at the moment is 7.6, so Peterson still needs an 8.9 to get into the lead. Started off the year with that big final at Snapper. As you see the sign for Sao Paulo. 
right below there. Felipe Toledo from Ubatuba, Sao Paulo, Brazil. Lois, did you know that? Yeah, maybe. There's a lot of uh, Brazilians that have moved <laughs> there is, to San Clemente. Uh, I know on the Gold Coast we call it Rainbow de Janeiro because it uh, <laughs> turns into that uh, during the uh, snapper event. Really cool to see that, especially when you see surfer like Silvana in the water. You get so many cheers, and it's sometimes a lot louder than even the local contingent because they want to let them know how they're feeling. They've come a long way to see them perform. Don't and you love that? feeding off that. Yeah, I was about to say, don't you love the passion that the, the South Americans bring to it? I mean, you know, on the beach in, uh, in Brazil is, is just next level fan base. Uh, probably the best surf fans on the planet, really. You know, even with, uh, even with the, the non-Brazilians, uh, you know, they still get uh, massive cheers when they finish their waves. John John gets as loud a cheer as anyone over there. I'm sure Lima would want to invite them to a free surf. How cool that feels, just to get cheered on every time <laughs> you take off. They're so passionate about their surfers, and Lima represents Brazil quite well in the top 17. As we know, there's been a lack of events in Brazil on the women's side, which is kind of keeping those numbers short as contenders for the world title race, and we're hoping that changes very soon. Wiggly Dantes has been putting on women's events to try to promote that, because they've got some all-stars that just want to Paved the way to get themselves where Silvana is on the top 17. We're down to 50 seconds. And the local, Lakey Peterson, left chasing an 8.9, and the ocean is completely glassy and completely flat. Yeah, well, there's a little bump coming with 40 seconds to go. Silvana Lima with priority. I think she's going to have to take this, Joe. She can't afford to let Lakey go on this wave. So with priority, Silvana does play defense. Doesn't look like she's too interested in the score. Now running after something big and ends up sliding out. The big roll for Lima there was just to keep Lakey off of that wave. And Lakey has 15 seconds to try to pull off a miracle. Here we go. This could be it though, Joe. A little wave approaching. You heard Barton Lynch talk about the fact Lakey needed to be on the good ones to get those excellent scores. Let's see if she can manufacture this one. In two minds, deciding which way she should go, right or left, chooses her backhand to try to steal the win. Two solid backhand moves out the back into a carving snap there, and she'll keep on digging into the open face. Trying to hang in there to trim this thing through the inside. And Peterson looking for her final move at the buzzer. One more hack there, incomplete. Her best moves are out the back, the two verticals, but needed an 8.9, which is a massive score pass. Yeah, was it better than her first wave? It was probably half the size, but surfed it amazingly. You can see Savannah enjoying today, that's for sure, but scores trickling through for that last wave, and it looks like Savannah Lima is going to make the final. As we take another look at Lakey's last wave. Beautiful surfing. I mean, any other day, I mean, look at that, that was perfect. Got the rotation, got the body all the way back around. Three solid maneuvers there for Lakey Peterson. Unfortunately, the size of the wave was probably, is what hindered the scoring potential. She surfed incredibly well through this entire event. Some highlight reels from Lakey. She's going to put herself in a world title race here very soon, and I'm loving what I'm seeing from her. So not enough from Lakey Peterson. Silvana makes a CT final for the first time since 2010 when she finaled in Peru. Swatch Pro continues right after this. Do you like that? Well, if so, subscribe over there and then watch more videos over there. And then tell us your favorite videos down there. It's a three-step process. Do them all now.